You've probably heard of microservices. But what are they really? Are they SOA all over again? Or are they an evolution? We used to build monolithic applications. These applications came in a variety of different forms and companies built lots of them. But the teams in these companies were grouped into business areas, silos. So the applications would form into silos along their business lines. This led to a lot of duplication across the different applications in the different silos. And the duplication made the IT function expensive to run. Then someone had an idea. What if they pulled out the common pieces into reusable services? Less code in each silo seemed like a good idea. Then they realized they could build whole companies based on these reusable services. This seemed like a very good idea. The trick was to rearrange the people to match the services. So instead of sitting in silos, the teams would match the architecture that they wanted to end up with. This was termed a service-oriented architecture. But there was a problem. Refactoring companies turned out to be slow and difficult. So people took the same pattern that was designed for big companies and applied it to break up monolithic applications, knowing that with this architecture, the companies would be able to grow and grow and grow. This was termed microservices, change through small, well-defined services that are easy to reuse. So silos were broken down and monoliths were broken up, evolving incrementally towards contemporary service estates. But things weren't entirely rosy yet. While silos seemed expensive and wasteful, they had one big advantage. Each application was free to handle change independently of those around it. Each application was, in some sense, an island. But that's not the case with microservices. They're typically built on HTTP, REST, or some other protocol that's made of requests and replies. This works well when ecosystems are small, but gets harder as they grow more complex and more interconnected. Services are tightly coupled. So if one service fails, or even just runs slowly, the fallout could be much larger. Others end up feeling that pain. Yet at company scale, the majority of processes run in the background anyway. They're asynchronous to one another. So it makes sense to decouple services from one another. The Confluent platform based on Apache Kafka helps with this as it provides a data backbone for your services. This connects services together. It also connects their data together. The three tenets of messaging, decoupling, notification, and data transfer embedded into a layer of permanence. Messaging that remembers. So every service gets the data it needs. But unlike typical service frameworks, it also decouples services from one another so that they can evolve independently. This makes it much easier to move away from legacy architectures, to evolve away from the past towards a better factored future, whatever that may look like. So wherever your business ends up, be it on the cloud, on another device, or in another geography, the Confluent platform provides the service backbone built to handle today's data-centric world in a way that can adapt to your company's future, wherever you might take it. Services built on the power and immediacy of a streaming platform.